Hi, I'm Charlie, and this is my film on filmmaking. I've always found filmmaking interesting. It doesn't matter if it's a movie, TV show, YouTube video, music video. I'm just totally fascinated by this art form. I think that I'm so captivated by film because I see it as the only way to fully visually capture something inside someone's head. Filmmaking is that creative struggle to turn an idea into something that you can see. In an effort to paint my own pictures, I've made my fair share of films. And in doing so, I have learned a microscopic amount about what it takes to make them. The purpose of this film is to share that with you. Throughout my project, I conducted multiple interviews with local filmmakers to get some insight into their process when it comes to filmmaking. Here is an interview that I did with two editors and writers for our high school news show, BCC TV. So you guys both make films every week on a schedule for BCC TV. Uh, obviously you guys are both in high school, which means that you, your schedules are kind of crazy. How, does, how do you find the time to make these films and how does it motivate you to keep going like, when you have all this work to do? Well, since we have a strict deadline every week, uh, we have to get our projects in by Thursday afternoon. Right. It means that I'm gonna have to make sacrifices. Booker is totally right here. Setting aside time to film and work on a film is essential for filmmaking. You have to find a way to manage your time and stick to a schedule or else you're never gonna get anything done. Here's an example of a type of schedule called a strip board that is used by filmmakers to schedule filming. Not only is it used to figure out times to shoot, but it also helps plan out each scene and the actors and materials you'll need. Each scene is made into a column on a spreadsheet. It is highlighted with a color depending on the time of day the scene will take place. Then it is assigned a specific time during the shoot. The scenes are spread out on an estimate based on how long each will take to set up and film. Then, each prop and actor is given a number, and that number is written below each scene that it appears in. This allows filmmakers to know which scenes to do first based on the amount of people slash props that are needed for it. Making a detailed schedule like this is vital in organizing a film, especially one with a lot of moving parts like actors and props. This can help you stay on track and get things done. Next, Gabs and I discuss how an audience is important to filmmaking. Yeah, and um, I think it, it can affect uh, the actual process of filmmaking. Like there are days when I'm, okay, there are days when I get really upset because I'm, I think that a lot of people won't like what I produce. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just have to remember that if I really enjoy what I'm doing and I'm proud of the product that we've made, right. um, then I'm sure it'll be okay. And I really just like, I think most importantly, I want to be true to myself in what I produce and right. make sure that what I produce is something I would like to see. Yeah. Um, because you can't always appeal to everyone. You can't, you know, not everyone is gonna like what you produce. And that's right. just, you know, I, that's just life and you're gonna have to deal with the fact that some people won't like it. Finding your audience is extremely important when filmmaking. Who do you want to see this film? Thanks to the internet, new audiences are being made every day. Gabs here recently made a video and uploaded it to a YouTube-like website called TikTok. That video got over 50,000 likes. Figuring out who you want to see your film can help guide your filmmaking process by knowing what you want to include in your film and how you want it to be seen. I also interviewed Liam Cornwell, a student of the higher level film program at BCC. We discussed the innovation that low budget filmmaking requires and that as long as you work hard, you can get the results that you want. It, re it requires a lot of innovation. Like yeah, when, when, you, when you, that's kind of like, with the like French New Wave, like I was a bunch of low budget filmmakers, like right. critics, mm -hmm. and they're like, like the shopping cart like track, right. tracking shot. Yeah, that's like that's the kind of stuff that happens when you're when you're on a low budget. But what I find with Adi film is that some kids are like, 
you have to be inspired. So if you're lazy, like when people don't have like expensive like camera rigs yeah. and stuff, mm -hmm. they they're just they'll just end up being lazy and they won't actually um, do anything to get the shot that they want. Right. So I think if you're actually driven mm -hmm. in any situation, you can get the shot you want by being creative. Right. Being adaptable. Filmmaking is full of unpredictable and uncontrollable situations, no matter the level of film you are at. Film requires a lot of creative problem solving and being able to think on your feet. Here's a clip from a documentary about the making of the pilot for the TV show Lost and how they overcame something they couldn't control. I had nothing but intense rain for like a week for the first week of shooting, so it's been pretty intense. It rained for 12 days. And uh, I don't think I've ever shot anywhere where it's rained for, for 12 days. But fortunately, it was part of our story, so that was fine. We were making rain, it was standing in the rain. And the, we even got flash flooded once out of the jungle set. When we got to Heiakea, which is the cockpit sequence where they come, they find the pilot, there was a flash flood which came down the hill there were literally camera cases floating away. The lights got thrown in, with the ballast got thrown into a container. The guys just ran and they got it into a container and the container had flooded during the, the storm as the storm had continued. So when we got there in the morning, not knowing whether we'd be able to shoot, we, the gaffer and then the electricians were pulling out the lights and looking at the, the sodden ballast and going, oh. And the gaffer was saying, he goes, you know, if we were like in Minnesota, we could use those big, heaters that they use to keep the football players warm. And then he goes, you know, like they're like dryers. And he goes, hair dryers. And actually Kevin Blank was standing near to me and I said, Kevin, do you have a credit card on you? And he goes, yes. I said, get in the truck, get in that van over there, tell them to take you to Long's and buy as many hair dryers as you can find. So he rushed off and he came back and they put the, the dryers on the C stands. There is a lot I don't know about film. I could study it for a thousand hours and I still wouldn't even be close to scratching the surface of what there is to learn about film. Thank you for spending a little time with me today for me to talk about some things I know a little bit about.